For this video, I'll be working through the question three of the 2018 level three mechanics exam. Question three. Astronauts return to Earth, a spring under the seat reduces the friction or the force during landing. The astronauts' kinetic energy is converted to spring potential energy as the spring is compressed. If friction is negligible, this will set the astronaut into simple harmonic motion. State the conditions required for the astronauts' motion to be considered simple harmonic. So this is pretty easy, they ask it every year. Um, you're just asking for the definition of simple harmonic motion. So I'm going to pause it, write the answer, then. So there must be a force which is linearly proportional to the displacement and it acts towards the equilibrium position. In other words, F equals negative KX. And that's pretty much the definition of SHM. It's got to be a linearly related um, force. It can't be like exponential, otherwise you won't get it. Simple harmonic motion, and it always needs to act towards equilibrium. Right, during landing, the seat had a mass, uh, the astronaut in the seat, Combined mass was 80 kilograms, and they were set into simple helmet motion with an amplitude of 15 centimeters and a period of almost one second. Um, determine the spring constant of the spring. So the formula in your formula sheet, I'll just show you where it is. There's a, there it is. That's a pendulum. That's the spring. So we're going to look at the spring, and we're going to rearrange it for k. So we'll write it t is equal to 2 pi square root m over k. In other words... K is going to be equal to, what will I do? I'll pull the 2 pi under, and then I'll square it. So I'm going to get two, uh, T divided by 2 pi squared, and that leaves me with just like an M over K. So then what I'd do is I'd move the K to one side, and then the 2 pi, uh, the T divided by, so I'd move, I don't know how I didn't describe that. Oh, I'll just put this divided by. M divided by that because uh, I'll, do it, I'll do it down here because you can change it right. This is just how to derive it. Um, 2 over 2 pi squared equals M over K. In other words, times both sides by K as so it moves K up here. Cancel the K out there. And then I'll move this underneath. So then I get K is equal to M divided by T over 2 pi squared, um, and that is going to give me 80 divided by, what's the period, very small, 9, 4 over 2 pi squared equals 3,574 newton meter, uh, newtons per meter, in other words, 3,570 newtons per meter, and the amount of energy, Ep, is equal to half k x squared god it's ruthless isn't it you got to have the k there to figure it out but you need to figure it out there that is ruthless there's no way to get the mirror if you'd stuff that up 0 0.5 times that number up there 3574 we will not round it because we're not savages um, times 0 0.15 squared because that is the amplitude that's a maximum displacement of the spring and um, that finds out the max energy and that is 40.16 joules which is yeah reasonable two joules i ran it up to three sf because there's three there's three there's three the minimum is three it needs to be three right Flip over the page Using a reference circle, otherwise determine the uh, the velocity of the astronaut when the astronaut is one ten centimeters above the equilibrium position, so 0 0.1 meters. Um, assume the motion is undamped. It's kind of nice they put that there. Otherwise, I'd assumed it was a damped. No, I wouldn't have. Um, it's always undamped, right? Especially at level three physics. That is 0 0.1 centimeters ish. This is going to be obviously the maximum amplitude. You should know. Should well know how phasor diagrams work ish. Um, so here's where we start. It's kind of the same as um, polar coordinate systems. Um, so this is where you start, and the phasor rotates around. So point one, the phasor would have started here. In other words, it's a big, basically a big pointy arrow. We're looking around. Yeah, that's in line with that. Yeah, that's in line with that. So here is our phasor arrow. That's where it is, right there. Um, and what are we going to assume? Start at equilibrium. Start at 
equilibrium. If I can spell that correctly. Right. There are two ways to go about this. Um, I'll talk through the second way when I'm done, and I'll do it the first way. Both are probably just as time-consuming. Um, maybe my way is a little bit more time-consuming, um, but I'll show you that probably the harder way, and then you can do it the easier way if you want. Um, but it's always easier or better to show the hard way. Right, so if I'm starting at equilibrium position on my formula sheet, this is when you start at equilibrium because sine starts at zero, um, which means the position is A sine theta, which is just omega t because omega t is move the t over there, you get theta. Um, first derivative, second derivative, that is just a nicer, neater way to write that. Um, right, so... We need to find out, okay, we'll just write it in. Uh, v equals A omega cos omega t. Um, what do we got? Amplitude is equal to 0 0.15 meters. Uh, the angular velocity is equal to 2 pi over the period, which we have, and we don't have the time that this position occurs. So we're tough out of luck. Um, we need to find the time that this position occurs. So we need to basically use y is equal to a sine omega t. Rearrange for time. In other words, y over a is equal to sine omega t. Um, in other words, time is equal to sine inverse uh, y over a divided by the angular velocity, or angular frequency, because it's not really a, is it a, yeah, it is, it's angular frequency, right, uh, I'm going to write this in, so there's going to be equal to sine inverse, let me see that, there we can, 0 0.10, because it's a position, divided by uh, 0 0.15, divided by, oosh, 2 pi over, what was the period, 0 0.94. Um, and that gives us 0 0.109 oh, that'll do, seconds. You needed to change your calculated radians. If you didn't change your calculated radians, you had a bad day. Um, I got a real wacky, I got like 6 seconds. I was like, that's not legit, because that means I've gone around like more than 6 times. And it turned out calculator is still in degrees from like the previous couple questions. You've got to be careful with that. So this is the time. Sweet, now we can just substitute into our velocity formula. A omega cos uh, omega t, which is going to be easy peasy, 0 0.15 times, let's leave it out, 2 pi over 0 0.94 um, cos bracket 2 pi over 0 0.94 times... 0 0.109, and that gives me 0 0.7476 meters per second negative 1, which is basically 0 0.748 meters per second negative 1. There we go. So that is one way to do it. Another way to do it is you have this height here on your phaser, whatever you call it. On your phasor diagram so this distance here is 0 0.1 this distance from here to here is just the radius which is 0 0.15 you can find this angle theta and you can just plug that in to here because remember wt omega t is just equal to theta because distance times time angular distance times time gives you angular displacement and then they would skip you ever having to find the time, etc. You just literally just find out. Use a little bit of trig. Um, it would be, what have you got? The hypotenuse, the opposite. It would be sine theta equals the opposite divided by that. And you'd rearrange to find what theta is. And then you could be able to skip the step of finding time. But, I don't know, six one way, half a dozen the other. Right, next question. Uh, what have we got? The motion of the astronaut is quickly brought to rest by a damping system. Uh, which can be modelled in the laboratory with a mass spring and a beaker of water. And a beaker of water is shown. Discuss how damping 
will affect the amplitude and period of the harmonic motion of the mass of the spring. Um, your description should include... So these are literally just the bullet points we're going to cover. Description of what is damping. How does it work? Sketch a graph of everything. So I'll just... You can read it yourself. Um, I'm going to pause the video, write out like a big spew, and then, uh, and then I'll unpause it, talk about it, and then how to draw the graph. Right, so what I've said is, like, what is damping? So damping is the force that opposes the motion of the mass and removes energy from the system. The answer schedule said damping is a force that opposes, or well, that always acts opposite to the restoring force, which isn't really technically true because damping is friction. Friction just opposes motion. When the mass is moving up, the restoring force... Like when it's past equilibrium, moving up, the restoring force is obviously towards the centre, so it's downwards. The frictional force is also opposing the motion, which is downwards, which in that case, they're both in the same direction. So I'd argue the answer schedule is a bit off on that one. Um, and it makes sense. The definition of friction is just a force that opposes motion, so yeah, just whatever. Um, but the point is that it removes energy from the system. In the model, damping is a frictional force of the liquid. Um, it's pretty obvious, it's what it is. Um, which always opposes the motion of the mass, because that's the definition of friction, um, something that, a force that always opposes motion. When the mass is moving towards equilibrium, friction of the, friction of the liquid acts away from equilibrium. So in that case, they do act in opposite directions, but it's not all the time. Sometimes they act in the same direction. Um, the damping will remove energy from the system, decreasing the amplitude, period slash frequency remain constant because that's what it's asking up here and they always ask for that because it's kind of like a neat thing the fact that you can have damping of something um, but the period and the frequency remain the same right so let's draw a graph of damping um, for starters they haven't put the units in so we'll just back them up on that one uh, put in mirror meters for that oh can we see that um, it starts at 0 0.15 uh, and negative 0 0.15 uh, we'll chuck in some periods, so we'll have, we'll make that one period, I'm going to use a ruler actually, because I should be using, or you should be using rulers if you're doing these exams, uh, oh, whoops, I'll just make that, uh, I'll chuck that as one centimetre, I'll make it every centimetre, uh, right, and I'll just call across, this is just going to be, 0 0.94 and this is T1 this is T2 T3 I'll just, this is 1.88 this is 2.82 T4 yeah and you really need 3 that's really all it is um, now what we'll do is we'll draw in our damped lines so we'll make these sort of Exponential decay lines. Oh, it's not that exponential, but whatever. I'll flip this sort of sideways. I'm very artistically challenged, so try and make that neat if I can. Eh, close enough. Right, and I'll start. Where do I start? Oh, I'll start at the top. So if I'm starting here, means I need to cut the axis here. My maximum needs to be in line with that one there. Basically, I need to, if I start at the top, I need to be back after one period at the top up here. So I want to come down, cut through the x-axis, down to the bottom, cut through halfway through again, and then I want to be right above where I've started. So that's one full cycle. I start at the top, I end at the top, one repetition of the pattern. Again, I am going to... What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut through the there, and I'm going to cut through there. I'm going to end at the top, so in line with that, cut through the half of there again, and I'll just continue it because I'm on a bit of a flow. There we go. Oh, am I doing this neat? I hope I am. Oh, I've sort of stopped my. Uh, Decreasing, I might just tack that down a bit. Just kind of squeeze this. Yeah, that'll do, that'll do. Um, there we go. 